And since we are talking about emulation, of course, let's put up the legal mumbo jumbo stuff. You can feel free to pause the video or read it in the description. Okay, down in the description also, you will see that there are two zip files. Uh, one of them is the PS2 trimming and ISO tools zip file. This is the exact same zip file that was in the last video. The difference here is that we will not be using the expert program. We will only be using the uh, first three folders, the programs in the first three. And I believe that ISO Buster is the only one that requires an installation. The other two programs work from right within the folder, so you can drag and drop them to your desktop. Um, and then the other zip file is the Codebreakers V10 uh, file that will have a folder in it. You can drag that folder to your desktop, and within that folder, you will find the three files that we will be using here today. And yes, before you ask, you can combine what I showed you in the last video with what we're going to do in this video. Meaning, if your uh, PS2 backed up image file was able to be trimmed down before you build the ISO, after you've trimmed it, you can go ahead, insert these files the way I'm going to show you, and then you can build the ISO. Meaning, when it's constructed back again, it will not only be trimmed, but you will have the code breaker files installed as well. So you can do both. And we'll talk more about that when we get there. So let's go ahead and let's start off by launching ISO Buster. All right, and yeah, we get this little window here. Let's just close this. And once we do that, we'll be using Soul Calibur 3 once again as our example here today. Let's go ahead and take our ISO or bin file and drag it here to this first window. Click on the little red box which says ISO and there you will get all your files. Now we're going to create a folder here on the desktop and we're just going to call it SC3PS2. And actually let's put a 1 at the beginning so it's at the top. I'm going to call it 1 SC3 for Soul Calibur 3 PS2. Right, and let's go ahead and open that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of these files and we are going to drag them over. Just hit not now, hit continue. And that can take a while depending on the size of the ISO. Now this is very important, make sure once you've copied all these files that they are in the exact same order as they are in ISO Buster. So look at it from top to bottom. It should be the same here from top to bottom. Once you've confirmed that they're in exactly the same order, you can go ahead and close ISO Buster. The other thing you need to remember, as we discussed in the last video, this is just basically a copy of your ISO. So we can go ahead and we can mess with this folder all we want. Don't worry about it. Any changes we make here do not affect your original ISO. Now you're going to open up the Codebreaker v10 files folder that you downloaded. We are going to go ahead and copy all three of these files and we're going to stick them into our folder here. Okay, and here you'll be prompted uh, with this message. Just hit copy and replace. You're basically going to override this file here, and that's fine. The next thing we're going to do is look for the game ID. Now, the game ID will always be four letters, followed by an underscore, and then five digits. And there's usually a little dot in there. So in this case, it's SLUS. Sometimes it'll be SLES or SLJP. Um, so what we're going to do is once we find the game ID file here, we're going to go ahead and we are going to add the extension ELF all in caps. And then press enter and here we are going to hit yes. Now believe it or not, we're pretty much almost done from this point on. It'll be kind of the same as it was in the last video. We're just going to um, rebuild the ISO. But before we do at this point, if you have not reduced or trimmed the file 
of your PS2 backed up ISO, you can go ahead and do that now according to how I showed you in the last video. Now I've already done it here. In this case, this padded file was the dummy file. And as you can see, I went and reduced it from one uh, gig down to zero KB. Now in that other video, I show you how to do this using the first method. So now I've trimmed it down and I'm gonna go ahead and um, create the ISO again. Now, if the first method didn't work for you in that last video and you have to use the second method, you can't really insert these files using that second method. So what you're gonna have to do is use the second method, create the ISO, and then once the ISO is created with the new trimmed file, you're gonna come here and you're gonna drag that newly created ISO into ISO Buster, and then you'll drag those files over here, and when you drag them over here, that um, newly created smaller file will be part of this, and then you just add the three files we added, rename the uh, game ID file so it ends with the ELF extension, and then we'll be ready to button everything all up. So if you're not trimming the game, then you don't, of course, don't have to worry about any of that, and you're just going to transfer the files and then add the ELF and move on. So let's go ahead and close the code breaker uh, folder. Now we're going to go into the number two folder of the zip file you downloaded, the CD DVD ROM generator 1.5. We're going to go into cdvdgen.exe. We're going to hit create new project. For this one, we're going to select DVD ROM master disk because this is a DVD um, based disk. If this was a CD based game, then we would pick the top one. Um, I explained in the last video, same thing I'm going to do here. If you're not too sure, the easiest way to tell whether you have a CD based PS2 game or DVD uh, based PS2 game is just look at the original size. Uh, here in Soul Calibur 3, it's 4 gig. That's a DVD based game. Basically, if it's about 700 megabytes or less um, in its original state, then that means it's a CD based game. Pretty much if it's like a gig or more, then it's a DVD uh, based game. So in this case, it's DVD. Let's go ahead and choose that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to highlight all of these files and we are going to drag them here to this large window. Now the key is that they need to be in the same order as they are here in your folder. Remember, you confirmed this order with ISO Buster, but here for me, it didn't do it. So what I'm gonna have to do is close it out. I'm gonna go back and open it again, pick the same stuff that I did before, and now I'm gonna have to transfer the files one by one in order, um, and I'll go ahead and do that now, and I'll just fast forward the video. Okay, so now it's in the exact same order as it is here in my folder. Don't worry when you see this, you'll notice that the code breaker file, instead of saying code breaker, it has a little squiggly line there. Same thing for the game ID file, it put a little squiggly line there. Don't worry about that, that's perfectly normal. Let's go ahead and go into volume tab, and then here we're gonna type the game ID, the first uh, four letters will go here in the first box. In this case, it's SLUS. And then we will put the five numbers, the five digits, which in this case, it's 21216. And you will put it without the dot. And here is the five numbers right there. Then producer name will always be PlayStation. Okay, and this is a US game. So we're going to put America. If it was a um, a Japanese region game, it would be Japan. If it was a, a European-based game, it would be Europe, but we're going to pick America. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just close our folder here, and we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this one 1IML, just like we did in the last one, All right. just so it shows up on top. Now let's go over here and click on File. We're going to go into Export IML File. And then we're going to look for this one IML folder that we created. So it should be in our desktop. And there it is right there. We're going to hit Open. And now here you can name this whatever you want. 
In this case, I'm going to name it SC3 for Soul Calibur 3, and then I'm going to hit, I'm going to pick PS2. Make sure you don't pick any weird characters, just letters and numbers, and don't put any spaces. Don't add anything else. Just hit save. We're going to rename this later anyway. So now it's done, and when we look in that one IML folder, we should see two files, an IML file and a IMS file, and that's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and close out of that, and then let's close out of this program. Just hit no. Now we're going to go ahead into the third folder that you downloaded, GNI, uh, GNIE IML2 ISO, and click on the EXE file. We're going to go ahead and click on open and you're going to point it to this one IML folder. And then there is the IML file. You just click on it and hit open. And then here you're going to click on IML to ISO and that's actually what's going to create our new ISO with our code breaker files in it. So let's go ahead and click on that. Okay, so once this is done, you'll get the OK there. We can go ahead and close out of that. And there we go. So then we can go here into our one IML folder, and you'll see the newly created ISO file will be there. At this point, you can now rename this ISO file whatever you want. So let's just call it uh, so caliber three. All right, let's do that. And I'm just going to drag it over here to my desktop. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the PS3 and I'm going to show you what we are going to need to do. All right, so here at the PS3, let's go ahead and go up to um, memory card utility. And as you should do anytime before you play a PS3 game, make sure you have a couple of uh, cards, memory cards set up for the PS2. I have an MC1 card set up and an MC2, and I've assigned slot number one to the MC1 and slot number two to the MC2. And that's, of course, so your games can save, and the stuff that you do in Code Breakers can save as well. Let's go into Webman Games, PlayStation 2, and if we scroll down here, I haven't added any box art or whatever. Um, there's the Soul Calibur 3 ISO. Go ahead and load that. And in this one, remember, I trimmed it down and it also has the code breaker stuff in it. So let's launch it. All right. And you'll notice that whenever you insert these code breaker files, you will always be brought here to this browser. So we're going to go down, use the, um, use the uh, circle key or press any button. Oh, don't forget to press the PS button. That might help. Uh, we're going to move the D-pad down to where it says File Browser, and we're going to hit Circle. Now we're going to go into CDFS and hit Circle again. And now we're going to scroll down to where it says uh, Codebreaker 1.elf. Of course, some of it is missing because it has a squiggly line. No problem. Just hit Circle. And that's pretty much it. Now we can go ahead and just select your game or select your cheats and then you're just going to start your game. So let me just show you that everything here is working. I'm going to go ahead and look for Soul Calibur 3. Okay, and there we go. We're playing Soul Calibur 3. So, oh, too many codes. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. This one, whenever you see enable, code must be on. You have to press X to make sure it's enabled. Let's just pick infinite time and let's pick infinite health. And uh, I think that's all we need to do. Let's go ahead and hit start. And now we're going to move over to start game and we are going to press X. And here we're going to press X again. Now you'll be brought back to the uh, browser here. You're going to go back down to file browser, hit circle back down to CDFS, hit circle again, and this time we are going to launch the game. The game will be the uh, game ID file, in this case the SLUS, um, whatever it was, 212, 16, or whatever. Now the squiggly line is there so you can't see it all, but you can tell by the first four letters this is the one. Uh, it's the one we added the ELF extension to, so go ahead and press circle.
All right, so let's see here. So you can see the clock up on top, it's not going down. And my health, I'm not losing any health either when I get hit. It actually goes down a little, but then it goes right back up. See that? So we are good to go. Now, if you ever want to start the game without code breakers, when you get into the file browser, all you need to do is just pick the game ID file, the one we added the elf extension to, and then it'll just start the game without code breaker. All right, that's it, guys. I hope this helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe and like. That always helps to motivate me to keep doing more of these videos. And we'll go ahead and see you on the next one.